Hi, it's Brian. Welcome to the Awards Contender and very excited to do my BAFTA predictions today. It's not just me this time. I have a special guest, Cameron Sheets, entertainment editor at Queer Tea. How are we doing, Cameron? Hey, I'm so great. I'm so honored you asked me to join and, you know, talk about the Brits, a spot of the Brits. So how this is going to work, everybody, is we're going to talk about the top eight categories. So we're going to start today, Cameron, with Best Adapted Screenplay. The nominees are All of Us Strangers. Yes. <laughs> American Fiction. That. Oppenheimer. Poor Things. And The Zone of Interest. Uh, so what do you think of this category? What do you think of those nominees? I really like the crop. I think that this is, like, in my mind maybe the more interesting race of the two screenplay categories uh, at the BAFTAs. I mean, one big thing to note, and, and again, we're talking differences between the BAFTAs and the Oscars, is that Barbie here is in original screenplay instead of adapted. So we're already looking at a different field and we're already like, yeah, okay, if, if this thing wins this, it doesn't necessarily mean this at the Oscars. So, you know, that's exciting to me in, 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 on some level. And I mean, I think it's a really strong crop of names. I mean, we got excited about All of Us Strangers, which did fairly well at the BAFTA nominations, um, Andrew Scott snub notwithstanding. But I feel like, yeah, what's, what's that about? But it is great to see that show up somewhere and get some love somewhere because that film was so worthy and, and just such a, an accomplishment on every level. Um, so that's exciting to me. And, you know, elsewhere, I, I don't want to steal your shine, but you had already pointed out to me that American fiction at the BAFTAs only shows up here. And that's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's a little ridiculous. American fiction is such a wonderful movie. It yeah. just barely missed my top 10 of the year. It's like number 12. It's so great. And it did very well at the Oscars. It got five nominations. Why is it only nominated in just adaptive screenplay at yeah. BAFTA? So because American Fiction is not nominated for anything else, I don't think it's going to win here. Although I am leaning toward that film in adaptive screenplay at the Oscars right mm -hmm. now. It's like between that and Barbie. Oppenheimer, oddly enough, has not been very competitive in screenplay, even though right. it's looking likely to win like picture and director for most of the season. So, I mean, it could win a BAFTA. For me, it's between All of Us Strangers and Poor Things. What do you think? Yeah, I think that that's a great observation. I, I sort of, you know, I don't know that as many people vote the way that I think they do, which is where they try and spread the wealth. I mean, it doesn't pan out that way if everybody's voting, you know what I mean? But in my mind, if they're going to vote for Oppenheimer for Best Picture, which we'll get to, then this is like the biggest and best way for them to reward poor things, which I do think, you know, showed up in a lot of nominations, is clearly really well liked, is distinctly... European, you know, at, at least, at, at least that, like, it's, there's, there's that element to it, too, which is interesting. So I'm sort of leaning towards that. I mean, I'm not really familiar with the Soros novel, but I do think that there's just such a vision that is brought to the screen. And, and I mean, that's hard to not want to, to reward in, in terms of poor things. Yeah, Poor Things was one of my three favorite films of the year. It's so extraordinary. I have been predicting it to win screenplay from the beginning, and it mm. did not win at Golden Globes or Critics' Choice for screenplay. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Can it win at BAFTA? I don't know why. It seems kind of like crazy. I'm leaning toward all of us strangers in a way because Yorgos Lanthimos was not nominated for Best Director at BAFTA. Andrew uh. Haig was. The, really, uh -huh. the only things that All of Us Strangers missed at BAFTA were Best Film and Best Actor for Andrew Scott. It shows up essentially everywhere else it could. So, But it's like, does it matter that All of Us Strangers got zero Oscar nominations? Does that play a factor in their voting? I would hope not. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I don't know. I, I Again, I would really love for them, for BAFTA <laughs> to be able to show some love to All of Us Strangers because... If that kind of comes and goes as this unawarded, you know, I know it's picked up some small, some, I'm sure it's picked up some things here and there, but it, it would just be such a tragedy for it to not get any sort of like major awards body recognition. It would be probably the one big televised award for that movie the whole season. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of want it to win. And so I'm just going out on a limb here, Cameron. I'm going to predict at BAFTA 
that all of us strangers is going to win adaptive screenplay. I said it. Okay, I love it. I love the boldness. <laughs> I'm going to respectfully say you're wrong. <laughs> and I I think it's going to be poor things here uh, for, for sort of the reasons I mentioned. I, I think, again, not to get too ahead of ourselves, I think we're going to see a little bit of an Oppenheimer party elsewhere. And this is a great yeah. spot to reward poor things. I would love poor things to win as well. And I think either one has a pretty good chance. You might be right, but I'll go down with the ship on all of the strangers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, noble, noble. Okay, so our next category is Best Original Screenplay. The nominees are Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Maestro, and Past Lives. Past Lives, where I met you in person, remember? That's right. Yeah, we've had a, quite a journey with that film. Oh, I was in tears, too. I was like... <laughs> truly the whole final third of the movie so it's a shock that i was able to like say hello after the fact um love that movie as i know yeah, you do pa past lives was my favorite film of 2023 yeah. i just i walked out at sundance in january of 2023 and i said uh i don't think i'm gonna see a movie better than that this whole year <laughs> and i never did i would love for past lives to win something big this season i mean celine song won the dga award for best first yeah. time feature which was awesome uh, I I don't know. I Past Lives, it did okay at BAFTA, it didn't do great. I'm leaning toward Anatomy of a Fall in original screenplay because it won at Golden Globes, and Anatomy of a Fall did extremely well across the board in its number of nominations at BAFTA. But, I mean, I can never count out Barbie or The Holdovers either. What are you thinking about this category? Yeah, I, I was leaning towards Anatomy of a Fall too. Like, it, that's, that would, I, I would say that would be my prediction, but... Uh, it's a little up in the air. I, I'm curious, you know, there's such a love for the holdovers. Uh, and and it's easy to see why. It's a, an extremely lovable film, but it is a smaller, quieter, subtler thing. And, and it's also just, again, not to be like, well, this is an American movie and this isn't because that gets complicated, but it is so distinctly New England and not England proper. It's such a, it feels so... American in that sense too. Uh, so I kind of wonder if, if it connects with folks over there across the pond in the same way. The granted, it's not like Anatomy of a Fall set in London. It's certainly not. <laughs> uh, but I I don't know. It's just something that I've had in the back of my mind. I think Anatomy of a Fall is, is just such a, a feat on so many levels, but just the way it's written, the way things are like Gradually, gradually revealed to us the layers on top of layers of uh, emotion and and whatnot. It's it's such a great script, a and God, it would feel so good to give this a little stamp of approval for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just don't know what else takes it here. Barbie mm -hmm. won original screenplay at Critics Choice, so that script has one there. But I don't know if there's any crossover between Critics Choice and BAFTA. I like, yeah. they do enjoy, at BAFTA, their international films, so I do think that gives Anatomy of a Fall the edge here over, mm -hmm. like, Barbie or The Holdovers. So, yeah, I mean, my choice in the category would be Past Lives if I was voting, but my final prediction, Cameron, in original screenplay at BAFTA is Anatomy of a Fall. What do you say? I'm there with you, Anatomy of a Fall for original, yeah. We can agree All on right. that one. We can agree on this one. <laughs> that would be funny if we went through the whole conversation and we just disagreed on every single yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I say, I, I say with confidence. You're like, no, no, Brian, yeah. that's oh, wrong. Oh, wrong, boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we move into the acting categories. Let's start with Best Supporting Actor. The nominees are Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr., Oppenheimer, Jacob Elordi, Saltburn, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, Paul Meskel, All of Us Strangers, and Dominic Sessa, The Holdovers. Dominic Sessa is so wonderful in that movie. I love him. I'm happy, happy he at least got this nomination about. Yeah, definitely. Definitely very, very thrilled to see him here. It's, he's just so, he's so wonderful. I, I'm, I mean, to get right into it, it's Robert Downey Jr.'s to lose, right? I mean, how could yes. it not be? But I love this crop of names. I, you know, have complicated feelings about Saltburn, but Jacob Elordi getting in there is really fun to see, I think. I love I love a little curveball like that. Like, we didn't see him anywhere else, but he shows up there. 
this year and you know he's have he's had a moment he's had a year for sure so it sort of felt like that's the the nomination is the achievement but it's it still kind of tickles me to see him show up yeah i feel like the early buzz for jacob alordi was for priscilla not saltburn so it's weird Mm -hmm. to me in a way that the one big nomination he gets all season is for saltburn which I am an outlier, Cameron. I love Saltburn. I have loved that movie since I saw it at Telluride. Uh-huh. And it was kind of sad when it finally opened and then went to Prime Video and everyone hated on it. I was like, <laughs> aww. It was a wild on. ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can anyone beat Robert Downey Jr.? I just don't know. I just don't think so. I mean, if there's a surprise, who is it? Ryan Gosling? Since the beginning, since last July, we've all kind of thought Ryan Gosling was in second place in supporting actor behind Robert Downey Jr. If Downey Jr. wins everything through the Oscars, we'll never really know. Uh, I mean, they didn't really go for Killers of the Flower Moon. It didn't get actress Mm. for Lily Gladstone or director for Scorsese. So I don't think De Niro wins anything this season. Like Barbie, it did fine. It got into a lot of categories at BAFTA, but it just... BAFTA doesn't feel like the place where they're going to give Barbie a major prize. I don't know why Mm -hmm. I feel that. (laughs) And there's just not someone there that screams out like, oh, that person could win over Downey Jr. There's there's a great mix of, of, uh, you know, people in this category, but nobody that really feels like, oh, well, they could easily take it instead. There's not, right? Right. No, I, I I don't think so. I just don't know that there's, like, that clear path, so... RDJ, Oppenheimer, that's the one for me. It would be quite the middle finger to Andrew Scott, right? Uh, If Paul Meskel won Best Supporting Actor. (laughs) That would be wild. (laughs) That would be really, really, really wild. I mean, yeah, I guess we're talking about Barry Barry Keoghan winning last year. They love their their Irish breakout cuties, you know? Like, so, so maybe this is his opportunity. So, yeah, I think our final prediction and Best Supporting Actor, after having said all of that... (laughs) <laughs> no big surprise here. We both think it's Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, right? Yep, I think so. Lock it in. Lock it in, Robert <laughs> Downey <it> Jr. <laughs> Next up is Best Supporting Actress. The nominees are Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks, The Color Purple, Claire Foy, All of Us Strangers, Sandra Huller, The Zone of Interest, Rosamund Pike, Saltburn, and Davine Joy Randolph, The Holdovers. What do we think of Supporting Actress at BAFTA? It's fun to see some variety in here. It's fun to see Saltburn, complicated thoughts aside. My gosh, like, yes, Rosamund Pike, of course. Like, she's the perfect British ice queen in, in that movie. And so I love that she kind of gets that recognition. But uh, Claire Foy, uh, it's funny. I didn't really expect to come into the conversation being like, oh, my gosh. But it does feel great to see that movie recognized, deservedly so here. And so, like... Being reminded that Claire Foy is among those nominees, as she should be, is is awesome. I mean, she does such great nuanced work. So it's an exciting, exciting field. Uh, but I think that this is another one where our winner is going to kind of align with um, what we've been seeing all season long. And I would I would love to see that happen. And I'm yes, I'm speaking about Davine because... I think she's so, so wonderful in, in Holdovers. I just, I, I saw that film at the Telluride Film Festival early September. I walked out of the theater loving it. And I said, God, that Divine Joy Randolph performance is wonderful. I really hope that gets some notice in the months to come. Mm-hmm. And then to see her just sweep the critics' prizes. She yeah. she might sweep from now until Oscar night. It's like kind of amazing. I love it, it because yeah. it's not the most obvious win. It's no. not like this big... You know, Daniel Brooks for The Color Purple would have been a more kind of obvious pick to sweep. You know, it's a bigger performance, but I just don't think the movie uh, worked Mm -hmm. for everybody and that hurt Mm -hmm. her chances there. Although she did thankfully get the one nomination for the movie at the Oscars, which is great. Uh, Davine Joy Randolph just has some heartbreaking moments in The Holdovers that you just can't get out of your mind. And, you know, Mm -hmm. wonderful comedic actress doing fantastic dramatic work in that film and she's such an important part of that little ensemble Mm -hmm. so yeah i'm kind of leaning toward her too here even though it feels kind of unsafe to predict the front runners uh (laughs) in both supporting actor and supporting actress at bafta i feel a little weird about that no i know i did too i did too but i 
I guess maybe I am just playing it safe for sure. I, I've heard even chatter among like Oscars folks and folks that think about that, that they think, you know, it looks like it's Dave Vines. She's got it sewed up. But they think if there is a spoiler, they are wondering if it's Emily Blunt. And I, I mean, I think that the chance of that happening here is maybe even more likely just given that it's Emily Blunt and just given the love for Oppenheimer, of course. So Emily Blunt, I have had a little voice saying in the back of my head, like I thought for a while that Emily Blunt could surprise at SAG because she won Best Supporting Actress <laughs> a few years ago for A Quiet Place. You remember that? She won yeah. for A Quiet Place? Oh yeah. Just I will out never of nowhere. Forget. Wild. <laughs> And she's a part of, like, the biggest awards player of the year, a movie mm -hmm. everybody loves. So, like, I, I feel like Emily Blunt could win something between now and the Oscars. I still feel in my heart, no matter what happens, Randolph will win at the Oscars. I cannot imagine Emily Blunt's winning there. Yeah, in supporting actress outside of a shocker, Emily Blunt or Rosamund Pike. I think Divine Joy Randolph has this. Are we going mm -hmm. with her for our final prediction? Uh, yes. Yeah, I agree with you once again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The nominees at BAFTA for leading actor are Bradley Cooper, Maestro, Coleman Domingo, Rustin, Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, Barry Keoghan, Saltburn, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, and Teo Yu, Past Lives. What a great nomination that is for Teo Yu. I, Love that's my that. favorite BAFTA nomination this year. Number one. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome to see. It made it sting a little bit more that Greta Lee didn't make it an actress, but, but what like happened truly, there? I know, uh, <laughs> but truly so, so, so exciting. Um, deserved. I, what a sweet, beautiful, Man, and talented actor, we'll also have. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, best actor has been an interesting race this season. Like, from the beginning, like, in December, before I actually saw Maestro, <laughs> I was kind of thinking Bradley Cooper was going to sweep or do very well because it is a performance that, like, awards voters typically love. No, Transformation yeah. and real life figure, and he directed the movie and he ages mm -hmm. decades. It just was like, okay, this. He's been nominated for like 12 Oscars. It, like it, it felt like Bradley Cooper was going to do much better this season. Mm -hmm. He hasn't won anything big yet. I love that Coleman Domingo has gotten in basically everywhere for Rustin. It's a movie that did not perform very well this award season in any other category. And typically that you're in you're in like danger zone there. Mm -hmm. If you're if your movie is not showing up anywhere else, you can often miss like uh, Daniel Deadweiler did last year for Till, which I thought was oh. one of the three or four best performances of the yeah. year. And that was devastating to me that she missed, be kind of because her movie wasn't showing up anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But Coleman Domingo got the Oscar nomination. He got in over DiCaprio for Killers of the Flower Moon, which is awesome. He's here at BAFTA. And I mean, I just because the movie's not strong enough, I don't think he can win anything this award season, right. but at least he's there. And that's awesome. Yeah, why wouldn't you want to nominate Coleman and have him in the room? Like, that is the, like, just warmest, friendliest man in Hollywood. So, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and he is great in the movie. That's that's definitely where you want to reward that movie, if anything. Oh, for sure. And then I think Barry Keoghan, as much as I love his performance <laughs> in Saltburn, he is just happy to be here. I think that's yeah. a really cool nomination. I wasn't sure when I walked out of Saltburn, I'm like, is that going to get nominated for anything? Probably not. So in my mind, it's kind of overperformed. Like it got in a Golden Globes mm -hmm. and BAFTA and things. So that's, I mean, I'm happy he's there. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. The race right now, Cameron, really, from now until Oscar night, is between Paul Giamatti and Killian Murphy. So what totally. do you think about, like, who... In your mind right now, like, who is kind of in first place of those two figures? I don't know. For this weekend, for the BAFTAs, I mean, I think it's definitely going to be Killian Murphy. I just think, right. it's, speaking of over overperforming, like, yeah, Oppenheimer just showed up everywhere. And and he's sort of undeniable, like, just in, this, in the sense that that movie is so loved. And he's just this actor that's been working for, I mean, granted, we're going to talk about other actors who've been working for a while and feel like he's finally getting his due. Uh, but again, the sort of like UK, the part, the fact that he's from the UK sort of, I think, gives him a little mm. bit of a boost here. Whereas Paul Giamatti is, is 
the most American of all. <laughs> yeah, I have thought since before these nominations even came out, like I was like, if there's one place Killian Murphy probably wins, it's BAFTA. That just yeah. felt right to me. Like for Killian Murphy to still have strength going into the Oscars, he has to win at BAFTA. He has to win if, this, yeah. If BAFTA goes for Giamatti, I think it's over. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what I think right now. So No, I think yeah. that's I think that's really, really smart. Definitely. I think both of our final predictions at BAFTA for leading actor is Killian Murphy Oppenheimer. Is that mm -hmm. right? I think so. All right. So the nominees for leading actress at BAFTA are Fantasia Barino, The Color Purple, Sandra Huller, Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan, Maestro, Vivian Opera, Rye Lane. Margot Robbie, Barbie, and Emma Stone, Four Things. What do we think of Best Actress at BAFTA? Ooh, I'm nervous. I'm excited. It's so strange to have, you know, depending on who you ask, the perceive, perceived Oscars frontrunner, Lily Gladstone, to not be here. And I think this was a one of those areas where, like, the sort of category debate, like, where does that performance actually belong supporting lead? really did end up hurting her. And it's it's such a bummer. It's so it's so weird to not have her here in this race. The other, I think, like anomaly is is Vivian Opera for Rai Lane, which is a lovely performance. I'm really excited mm -hmm. by her. She's pretty young. She's got a lot ahead of her, a lot of projects in the in the can already coming up. So that's cool. And I love that if nothing else, this is sort of like an announcement of like a you know, keep your eyes out for her because she's she's going to continue to be something. Yeah, I, I mean, I do think here without Lily Gladstone in the field at BAFTA, it's between Sandra Huller and Emma Stone. Mm -hmm. Sandra Huller could win at BAFTA. I think if there's one place she can win this whole season, it's, it's here because Anatomy of a Fall did extraordinarily well yeah. across the board in its number of nominations. It's an international film. She is so great in that movie. It feels like Amazing. she should win something big. One big televised yeah, prize. Yeah. But I think Emma Stone gave the performance of the year, male or female. I just yeah. thought there was nothing for me that came close to what she accomplished in that movie. It is insanely good. I love everything about her performance <laughs> in that film. So I've been, I've been a big cheerleader for Emma Stone this season. Even though she's been celebrated before, she won... Mm -hmm. For La La Land, I'm pretty sure she won the BAFTA for La La Land in Best Actress. So they've given her one right. before. Yeah. So uh, this is, I've been thinking about this category all day, Cameron, because I'm mm -hmm. like, I kind of want to predict Sandra Huller. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of scientific evidence to go off of, but I was going to come in here and I am, I'm going to firmly tell you that my prediction is Sandra Huller. I mean, that's kind of who I feel like it's going to be. And I think that would be such an exciting uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it doesn't necessarily mean she's suddenly a front runner for the Oscar, but I think that is like a really fun way to shake this race up. Um, I mean, Emma's, yeah, Emma's amazing. She's so cool and and super, super strong contender here. But something's just telling me that Sandra's going to win this one. It feels right. If she's one of those performances, it's like if we get through this whole award season and she doesn't have one of these major awards, then something feels cosmically off. <laughs> so this is the one in my mind. This is the one she's going to get. I'm just like, what What are the factors that makes it that Emma Stone loses here? I mean, Poor Things did very well across the yeah. board in its number of nominations. And I think it's a better performance than she gave in La La Land, and she won for that a few years ago. Emma Stone and Poor Things, it's such a big, incredible performance that I just, I'm like... It would feel weird to me if I if I end up predicting Sandra Huller and then they announce Emma Stone. I'll be like, like well, Brian, <laughs> like, yeah. you're overthinking this in a way. <laughs> so I'm like 51-49 here, Cameron. At BAFTA for Best Actress, my final prediction is Emma Stone for Poor Things. You are and going I with? Would, I would love to be on record <laughs> and predict Sandra Huller. All right, two categories left. Let's talk about Best Director. The nominees are Andrew Haig, All of Us Strangers, Justine Trier, Anatomy of a Fall, Alexander Payne, The Holdovers, Bradley Cooper, Maestro, Christopher, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, and Jonathan Glazer, The Zone of Interest. Again, Cameron, it's weird that Bradley Cooper just gets nominated for a thousand things, and again, he's not going to win anything. <laughs> it's very weird. It's really weird. 
Sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's like this sick joke everyone's playing on him <laughs> because it's like, oh, you're almost there, but... <laughs> We don't have to spend too much time on Best Director. I mean, since July, August, yeah. I've been like, I think Christopher Nolan is just going to sweep. I don't think he's mm -hmm. going to lose anything in that category. He's done so uh, thus far. He won at Golden Globes. He won at Critics' Choice. He won the main uh, DGA prize. And he's never won an Oscar. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he just feels likely there. I'm like, I guess if there was one place he could get an upset would be BAFTA. Like, Justine Trier would be an mm. amazing win in Best Director. I would yeah. love that. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I don't think that Jonathan Glazer for Zone of Interest is even close to beating Christopher Nolan. But I wonder if maybe he's second place just, uh, mm. you know, as a Brit. <laughs> um, again, not that they favor their own, but it just, it, it sort of made sense to me. Um that movie showed up in a few spots that were key here. So there's definitely a lot of admiration for it. Uh, but I mean, right, it feels like Nolan's for sure. I had checked and and he has not won a BAFTA yet, but okay. it's been nominated before. And, and it feels like much like the Academy narrative. It's like, you, you know, this guy's done so much for the industry. Like he's made these massive blockbuster hits. Now's the time. Now's the time to say thanks. And I, I don't see how BAFTA doesn't also do that. Christopher Nolan is just so far out ahead. I think he mm -hmm. is going to sweep until Oscar night. And so uh, better late than never. Uh -huh. I think both of our predictions at BAFTA for best director uh, is Christopher Nolan Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. All right. And the final category we are going to talk about is best film. It's not called best picture. Uh, the nominees for best film at BAFTA are Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and four things. Is it Oppenheimer, Cameron? It's got to be Oppenheimer, right? <laughs> cue up the cue up the score. <laughs> Nolan's gonna march to the stage with wait, who do we? With Nolan and oh, and his wife and yeah, they're they're gonna and, you know, get Thomas, the team right? up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is their coronation, I think, for sure. I, I, yeah, um, I just mean, just feels like it. Anatomy of a Fall, I think, is probably in second place here. But again, kind of like director, I don't think it's close. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna sweep with the Minesweeper. Minesweeper with this giant bomb movie. He's he's that's that's the narrative for sure. I think Nolan's got it, and I think by the end of the night we'll be like, okay, so are we gonna see this again at the Oscars in a month? Like, I, I think. It's just the power player of the awards season. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of those. I like a surprise, Cameron. I am so happy yeah. when it's not just the same movie winning Best Picture every time. It's like, but <laughs> but it, this is a this is a year where it's just. I mean, we all love Oppenheimer. It feels like the right film at the right moment. So it just makes sense to me, and I think especially at BAFTA. Oppenheimer is going Especially. to win. Our final predictions at BAFTA for best film is, of course, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so as we wrap up your camera, if you can tell our viewers where they can find you online. Yeah, I am on, tw uh, not Twitter, X. I'm on X <laughs> still. <laughs> I holding on Twitter. for dear life. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> I'm holding on for dear life over there and on Instagram at Cameron Sheets. But yeah, I'm the entertainment editor at Queerty, so we'll cover all sorts of queer stuff there um and we always have a lot of fun covering the big award shows and whatnot too so get to do some of that there so check me out <laughs> thanks so much for watching and subscribing and let me know in the comments below what you think is going to win at the upcoming BAFTA awards and we'll see you next time at the awards contender